Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothi, and I am running a Sanctum. Alright, so we're going to warp to the Sanctum. And so I've been doing a lot of thinking. Before we go, I'm going to try to... Oh, no. Oh. It's really cool. We, uh, we just got our logo in, finally. So you can see here. Federation Uprising now has our eagle, so it soars over our structures, and I could not be more proud. Uh, we just got this sov that I'm ratting in right now, uh, which hopefully we'll see more of over the coming weeks. But either way, we are here now and having a good old time. And at the same time, really kind of looking at what fed up is going to be in the months to come and to figure that out really we've been thinking a lot about what fed up um, or at least I've been thinking a lot about what fed up is and what it has been um, for myself and, and what my expectations for it are and what my goals for fed up was from when I started it um, Fundamentally, my passion has been about making a different kind of EVE player base. A player base that wasn't so bitter, that was um, more proactive in making a better EVE. Um, and one that was invested in as many aspects of EVE as they could. Um, getting, you know, a lot of times I get called the lore guy. Um, but that's not necessarily because I know more about the lore than anybody else. Uh, quite the opposite. But it is true that um, I, I went through the process of educating myself in the lore. And I ma went through that process in a public way. So um, a lot of people kind of associate themselves with that. But I don't actually know... I don't actually know very much more about the lore than most of the people that are my fans. If you've, if you've watched my stuff or listened to my podcasts, all the lore stuff, then you probably know as much, if not more, than I do about the lore. Um, that being said, uh, I've actually been told a lot about, or I've been asked a lot in the last couple of days about the lore and wanting to bring back like the lore panel. And uh, I know that a lot of the old guys that did that sort of stuff has been busy a lot recently. But I also know that um, Makoto Priano and them with ARC have been very active. I think that's something that we might be able to do again. Um, so I'm going to reach out to, to them and see if that's something that they want to collaborate on. Speaking of collaborations, um, other good news. Um, well, maybe not good news yet, but uh, Manic Velocity. Uh, put out a post saying that he's looking for podcasters. I put my hat in the ring. So, um, who knows? That sounds like it could be a really fun thing, too. Manic um, is a great uh, streaming personality. He's very upbeat. Um, goofy, even. Um, but he said that he wants to make a more serious podcast, which I think is a good idea. Um, he has very a very good audience um, but he's also a smart guy, and you know, obviously, he's probably not as slapsticky as he portrays himself in a lot of the, his characters. Um, when he shows himself, I mean, he's a pretty smart dude, so I can understand his desire to like sit down and tear through the nitty gritties of it, um, which I think is honestly what podcasts are really good for. Um, so I'm excited for that, regardless of whether or not I end up being part of that project. I uh, I wish him the best of luck. Um, and if I'm not part of that project, I've got to figure out something soon. I got to figure out something soon because I got to start making podcasts again. I'm going to be um, trying to make this stuff where I basically um, I've been thinking that I can just record myself, go out here, run a sanctum, hit record, see what comes out, um, and then post it online. See if people like it. So let me know if you think if you like it. Let me put uh, feedback in the comments below. Um, or tweet me at Asherathi. Let me know if this is the kind of thing that you want me to regularly just kind of put on the camera with a, some audio and talk about whatever's going on. So I guess let's talk about um, 
some of the stuff that's going on. Let's see. So there's Lifeblood. Lifeblood is the biggest thing. Um, I just finished editing the High Drag podcast where we really dig into this kind of stuff. So if you want to know a lot about the, each individual piece of Lifeblood, um, you should check that out as soon as it's available. It should be really soon. Um, but overall, I think Lifeblood is a big deal. Or I hope that lifeblood is a big deal. Um, in a lot of ways, lifeblood is a really good follow-up to um, Ascension. And it almost feels like they're trying to build the other half to Ascension that Ascension should have been, right? Like, I remember as we were prepping up for Ascension, I was like, and there's they should come out with this new content for those alphas. Um, and they didn't really. So uh, that was a big struggle. And I think that they know that they struggled with that. Um, and the reason why I say that is because of what they did with their recruitment. Um, they had an advertisement stuff all laid out and they didn't do anything with it. They didn't post any of the recruitments that they made. Barely uh, any push for anything. Um and I think it showed a lack of confidence in their own product. Uh, I think that they had have the money to make it through this year. But I think that they understood that um, developmentally they were behind. And um, on, on a lot of the features that made things work. But they weren't behind on their kind of marketing or... Uh, you know, they're, they're kind of reconstruction as a company that was going along with that. Um, and so this year has really felt like a layover period as we kind of try to catch up with our ambitions. Um, you know, we had a two year layout, a roadmap, and we're coming at about, I think we're coming at three years. Um, and we're getting to the end of that two year plan. And it's starting to feel that way. But at the same time, uh, this change could be big and it's one of those changes that i'm not even sure if everyone's really paying attention or 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 realizing how big of a thing it's going to be um and it's possible that all of the major alliances have everything under control and you know basically there's not going to be very much of a shake-up or anything like that but i honestly don't think that that's true um, one of the things that we'll, we'll, we will likely see is much like the Phoebe jump changes. The Phoebe jump changes put a huge pressure on people who relied on a certain play style. Um, very sprawling empires, ratting empires, without the necessarily infrastructure. It, like, it goons got away with that sort of stuff because they're fiercely organized people um but if as smaller entities or less organizationally minded entities try to replicate those things they kind of got away with it because of the fact that they could also pull these tricks with supers or whatever and, and also there's the whole thing about like because pandemic legion could be everywhere that was a suppressing notion for capitals everywhere because if you brought too many capitals then the boogeyman would show up and pounds on you um either way i digress my point was that uh though the changes were fairly dramatic the after effect the actual changes the impact of those changes were seen over time um all the alliances at the time acted like it was no big deal and they'll deal with it um but one by one the the empires that could not adapt to this new restriction um ended up perishing and um and that's just the way it goes. So I think that that's kind of what we're going to see here, too. Uh, a lot of people run on the money that comes from moons. And there are sufficient entities that deal with moon money um, that are n not, um, not actually powerful enough to actively maintain the things that they currently passively maintain. Um, let me give you an example. And I'm not trying to say that, that Horde is terrible or anything like that. That's not my point. I actually really like Horde. Um, but 
we do happen to live right next to Horde. So there are some moons in our space that are controlled by Horde. And in fact, I even think that there's some moons in like Losec, in like our Losec area that are controlled by them. Um, now, would they be able to mine it? Uh, probably not. But because posses can be so uh, difficult and timely to take out, um, it they they can hold a moon that is much that is outside of their sphere of power um, in the same way. Or sorry, they won't be able to hold it in the future. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, so chances are, even even if we we don't actually start threatening that moon directly. Um, they won't be able to exploit it in the same way because it's in an enemy territory. So it won't be valuable to them. Um, and since it won't be valuable to them, they won't be able to commit as many resources to protecting it, potentially. Um, now, obviously, bigger and, uh, you know, depending on how things work when it comes to the balance of things, uh, there may be some projection. Like, people may project into moons that, they, that are outside of their main um, escape. But... Honestly, uh, that's fine. The entire... Um, I, I don't know that much about Null, personally, given the fact that I have spent most of my time in Faction Warfare. But what I do know is what Null people asked for. And what they asked for was farms and fields. And that seems to be what they're getting, right? Because you have your territory, and you have these things that you can do, and these activities, and you know these fields that you preserve, and you maintain, and you build up. Um, and I think that the people that are complaining about this sort of stuff are mostly people that just rely on the old style of play. And I think that you're going to see a lot of complaints about that. But I think that what we're seeing here is going to be um, the empires that survive are going to be the empires that most engage with their people. And I think that that's a better game. Um... I'm not, I'm not sure, but I mean, like, so, for instance, uh, in the old Sov, uh, it didn't matter how much your space was ratted, right? So, it, there was space that was left unratted, un, unworked, untended, so to speak. Not necessarily because there weren't people to work it, but because if... I want to like try to make things worthwhile. I need to punish people that try to do that kind of stuff, right? Like, I wasn't going to work it myself, but I sure as heck am not going to let you rat in this space. So thus, a lot of space was left fa fallow because the people who had the power to control it didn't have the will to use it because using it was a very individual thing. It wasn't valuable necessarily to the collective. There was ratting taxes, but that was about it. With the shift of ADM, so now uh, ADM being requirement for um, your defenses to be up to up to speed, suddenly uh, these ratters and miners and all that stuff are useful to the larger empire. Because just their general activity is valuable to people, regardless of economic transfer. Um, and because of that, what we've seen is a much bigger shift towards supporting those entities. Um, what was funny was during the rope wall changes, um, people were complaining because they didn't think the panic button was going to be good enough because people wouldn't show up anyways because who defends their miners and at that time that concern was true and i think i mean it might still be somewhat true but i think overall in the last you know the last year there has a, been a public shift of consciousness towards appreciation of mining and ratters within within not only your individual space, but even within your empires, right? 
So um, it used to be that, that Care Bears were very much frowned upon. In fact, just being a Care Bear in an alliance and not participating in combat ops, only participating in economic ops, like mining and ratting, uh, within a space was not considered to be um, was considered to be freeloading in a lot of cultural mindsets back in the day uh, because you weren't doing anything you weren't doing the work for the space but you were reaping the benefit but now you working the space is beneficial having a farmer tilling your land is beneficial to the king so the king has a field and installs farmers to work those fields, not necessarily uh, because they want you want the residuals from the fact you want you need that farm to be worked in order to get the benefits of it, um, which is a much better system. And so I think that this is just another step in that direction. That's my hope, um, because uh, we're seeing an Eve that needs more people and this is this is both this is the big gamble of ccp um back when cc uh, when phoebe jump changes even happened uh i even said that what they really did was they just made space much larger right because if you could go everywhere in space then everything is everything is very small um but they made space way larger by making it so that it was harder to get from point A to point B. Um, in fact, I said that based on wh what they were doing, I was expecting them to expect the population of Eve to increase by two to three times just because they're, they're, they're making the space available for those people. Uh, now we're going to need people. So we're going to have recruiters and we're going to need, uh, you know, that sort of stuff, but we're going to need more people. Which means we're going to need recruitment efforts and we're going to uh, like actual Eve recruitment e efforts um, like, you know, marketing. And mo most importantly, uh, we really need to start capturing these people. So hopefully the changes that are coming in Lifeblood with the uh, with the, those uh, high sec changes for those of you who think that, oh, my gosh, I can't believe CCP is spending all that development time in though in there. They're getting you the people. They're getting you the people. And they're keeping them in the game long enough for your recruiters to find them and give them purpose. It's our job to find them their purpose. Anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, I'm going to go dock up and um, chill out for a little bit. So, yeah, like I said earlier, just go ahead and leave some comments in the doobly-doo. Let me know if this is the kind of thing that you like. Um... Hopefully I'll be able to record more of these more often. Uh, it's easier for me to get these done than streaming, that's for sure. So uh, let me know. And also leave any sort of comments of things that you want me to talk about. Maybe lore topics, uh, game design topics, whatever. Um, and that about wraps it up. So without further ado, this has been Ashrafi, and I will see you in space.